So do you believe what God's already said? He said, I'm not a man that I should lie. If I said it, you can count it. You can take it to the bank. Hallelujah. Wow. Ooh, God, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for your move tonight, God. Thank you, Lord. If you're watching, matter of fact, if you're watching, I just want to pray for you right now. Whatever the situation you're going through, just want you to stretch your hand by faith. To your device, TV, whatever you're watching on. If you, if you see this later, you pray along with me. Father, I thank you right now for everyone who's watching this. That you're not limited by space or separation or by the time they see it. Your words are right now, word. Anytime we hear it, whatever they're facing, Lord God, show them who you are. Show them that you're a healer, a way maker. Provide that trust with you. Sometimes, God, the way can get hard and get tired, but you tell us, be not weary and well doing. For in due season, we will reap and we faint not. Don't faint, don't quit, don't stop, don't let go. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy tell you to let go and go back. Be the liar, the truth is not in it. God has not forsaken you. God allows testing so that you can know who he is and you can know who you are in him. Thank you, God, for wisdom and direction and healing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God praise. My message almost seems insignificant now ah, compared to what God has done. Ah, Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But since you came out tonight, I'm going to give you a word anyway because I don't want you to come to the house of the Lord and not hear God's word. God knew how he was going to move me. He let me prepare this message so he must want to. He didn't give me a plan B. Oftentimes, there are times where God will literally, I told the saints this, he will change my message. Huh. There, there are times where I'll, I'm standing here and I'll sense the Holy Ghost say, go somewhere different. Yeah. And, and because oftentimes I may prepare two or even three messages because I'm trying to sense where the Lord is going. And sometimes it's clear where I'm going. Other times I'm not sure. So, Lord, you know who's going to be there and what they need to hear. So, just he hasn't changed it. We're going to roll with what we got here. Amen. As we're talking about this subject of kingdom knowledge. Amen. So, get your Bibles. And turn if you would to the book of Luke, Luke the fifth chapter, Luke chapter five, and we'll take the answer of King of Dogs in that text. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, you need a Bible, hold your hand up, they'll get one for you. You got your devices. So many of you do, that's great too. Luke chapter five. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 5, beginning in verse 1, reads as such. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. Lord, that's my prayer, that great crowds will press in to hear the word of God, that we chase to hear God's word. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. He sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Oh mm -hmm. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing, but if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking because the catch was so great. There is a, what a fisherman, anybody here fish? I know Brother Gary fishes. Who else, anybody else here fish? No. Okay, we're a non-fishing church. Oh. Uh. <laughs> How many y'all eat fish? <laughs> and, oh, so y'all want to do the dirty work, y'all just want to prepare it for you, amen. Hey, how many y'all like good fish? Yeah. Good fish like the, the uh, whiting and uh, crappie. Yeah. crappie and crappie. The, uh, yeah. crappie. You know I'm not a fishman. Yeah. Crappie, crappie, and yeah. 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 <laughs> What's the one I like? Uh, Chilean sea bass. Anybody had Chilean sea bass? Yeah. Oh 
That's anointed fish right there. Yeah. And then the best fish of all. Yes. Oh, the big, the filet of fish from McDonald's. That's an anointed fish challenge right there. Amen. Come on, make sure if you're a McDonald's fish challenge person. Come on, right, brother Aaron, me and you, two mighty men of God. All right, the rest of y'all. Hey, Amen. I see that. That's a Holy Ghost wave. She made the Holy Ghost face when she weighed up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but you know, fishermen are, are 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 known to tell tales. You know. They out there, they talk about all the stuff they've done and called and they start complaining about stuff. And so the three guys were out fishing one day, and as they were in the boat, they began to tell one another about their aches and ailments. And they were trying to outdo one another. So the first guy said, I got this bad skin rash that just drives me crazy. I'm itching all day long, and I can barely stop scratching. And the other guy says, well, you know what? I got this cataract I can barely see. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I'm just throwing the thing out there. I can't even throw it at He's struggling. The back, other guy said, the third guy said, that's nothing, man. My back hurts so bad. They took out vertebrae. I can't hardly stand up. I ain't got no skeleton in me no more. I'm just in pain all the time. And as they complained about who had the most pain, they saw this man walking towards them on the water. And y'all know who it was. It was Jesus. And Jesus walked to them and got in the boat with them. And he said, I overheard you talking about what's happening. Let me do something for you. He touched the first man with the rash, and all of a sudden his skin cleared up, mm -hmm. and all the itch was gone, and he was like, thank you, Jesus. He touched the second man's eyes with the cataracts. All of a sudden, the cataracts were gone. He could see clearly again. He went to touch the third man. The third man said, oh, stop. And they was like, what's wrong? Jesus is here. He said, no, man. I'm on FMLA. I ain't ready to go back to work yet. <laughs> Y'all don't know what FMLA is, so. <laughs> it's something about being on the boat. Something about when people are out on the boat and bring something out in you, amen. amen. Um, I was listening to and, and looking at um, some of these mega, mega yachts. You ever watch the shows about mega yachts? Have y'all seen some of the luxury yachts they have out there? Yeah. My wife and I were a few years back in Fort Lauderdale. We were on a uh, river cruise, and they drive past the mega yachts. And the small yachts cost like $75 million. Right. That's like a baby, you know, you, 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 you learn how to have a yacht. And I was amazed by that. But I realized a lot of these yachts are by super wealthy people. And what they do is, oftentimes they use them to entertain people, entertain clients. They use them when they try to raise donations. If you're a candidate running for office, oftentimes they will have a fundraiser on the yacht, invite the people out. And something happens when you're on, on, on boats. And I want to talk today about something that happened in this situation with my boat. And I want to talk about you and your boat. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all got a boat? I got a boat. Amen. How many of y'all got a real boat? Okay, somebody put their hand up. You got one of your, your, your kids got boats in the bathtub. Oh, so to say that, you talk about, oh, I'm big. I, I understand. Praise the Lord. But, but we're talking about these boats today and how God used Peter's boat, and I want to make an analogy for you and for me. Talk about kingdom knowledge. For you, if you're tuning in, the series is about about kingdom knowledge which is kingdom economics. How God wants you and me to prosper because he has an assignment for you. Tell your neighbor, say, God's got an assignment for you. He got an assignment for you. And he wants, to un wants you to understand how you're both going to play a role in this. And as we look at this situation, we see Peter, he's been fishing all night long. That's his craft. He hasn't caught anything. And this comes along, Jesus says, hey, let me use your boat, and then I'm going to show you how to fish. Now, it's one thing to ask to let me use your boat. Right. Another thing for you to tell me how to do something, and I do this. Right. Amen? Amen? You can have somebody try to help you do something, and you know what you're doing already, mm -hmm. and they don't have no expertise in it? Man, what? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, y'all can't relate to it. How many of y'all go to the beauty shop try to tell the beautician how to do your hair? <laughs> Girl, what you need to do is the updo, and then flip, uh, and the beautician feel like, that you don't know in the head they say, if you say one more thing, I'm gonna smack you back. No. What they really say is, you keep talking, I'm gonna burn you. <laughs> so when you get burned, just realize that you're getting on their nerve. <laughs> but something happened in this story here, I'm gonna give you five quick points about this story here. First point is this number one, God will always test you by asking, not commanding, but by asking. Can he use your boat? Mm. See, Peter was there, and his boat was by the shore, and Jesus needed to use the boat, but the Bible says Jesus 
Ask Peter. Can I use your boat? He could have commanded because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything in this world belongs to God. But he asked Peter. He didn't command Peter. Why? Because he wanted to see if Peter could let him use what he blessed Peter with. How many of y'all have ever been blessed by God? Yes. Question, can God use what he blessed you with? Yes. That's the question we have to ask ourselves. Mm. Can God use your boat? You say, oh, I don't have a boat. Well, you do, because here's the acronym for boat. Boat is anything that produces wealth and income for you. So I create this acronym for you, B-O-A-T, BOAT. First off, the B stands for business. Do you have a business? Are you an entrepreneur? Are you an investor? Has God blessed you with the wisdom to create wealth, as he said in Deuteronomy 8? Because your hands, some people's hands are anointed and their minds are anointed to run businesses. Some people have an a, a, a entrepreneurial bent. You've been running stuff since you were a kid. You had a lemonade stand and your stand outdid everybody else's stand. Wow. Amen. You got a paper route. Your paper route was just successful. Why? It wasn't because you got put something in you. Yeah. Most, most really successful business people, they can change businesses because what's on the inside, they're going to transfer to the next business. Yeah. What God wants to know is if, if I can give you that thing, will you use it to bless me? Yeah. Can, can I use it for my services? Business. Oh, the old stand for your occupation. Maybe you don't own a business. Maybe you're not an investor, but you got a career. Amen. You got a, how many of y'all got a J-O-B? Amen. You got a job. That's God saying, I position you to create wealth. Matter of fact, after service, please don't leave. If you want to know how to take your career to the next level, Amen. we got an in-house specialist. Amen. In-house specialist. Yeah. With Spectrum. So the bank going to teach afterwards. Yeah. So I'm telling you, don't, don't, if, if a service is provided for you and you don't avail yourself, then you can't complain about not knowing what to do. Well, Amen. Amen. But occupation, can God get in your occupational boat? Can God be of service to others through your job? The A, the A stands for arts and athletics. Can God get you in the arts? Can you sing? Can you play music? Can you paint? Can you dance? Can, can those things, do they make money for you? Are you an athlete that somebody would pay to see play? See, sometimes God will position you and he'll put you there because he wants to give you a great platform. What he wants to know is, if I put you there, will you remember me? My God. Can, can you speak out for me? Because you know what? Oftentimes, we're good at speaking for God when we ain't got nothing. Because we ain't got nothing to lose. Oh. See, an athlete who ain't been heard by nobody, ain't been nowhere, he ain't got nothing to lose. Oh. But all of a sudden, when you make it to the NBA or you play it overseas, you got some money in your pocket, now it may cost you something to let God use you. It may cost you. Anybody ever had a relationship strain because now you serve the Lord? People liked you when you was crazy in the world. They did. When you were the life of the party, nobody had a problem with you. But the minute you start serving God, now all of a sudden they look at you like you weird. When you was drunk on the floor throwing up, you was fun to be with. Now you saying and your wig on straight. <laughs> <laughs> not y'all, people y'all know. Not y'all, not y'all wig. Arts and athletics, and then last, the teeth that the training, which means education. Uh -huh. It's amazing to me how many times people uh, chase hard after God, but they get some letter behind their name, and they become too smart for God. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you had nothing behind your name, you was God help me. <laughs> but now you got you know a, a BA and a BS and an MBA or a, 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 a JD and a PhD and the elemental P, whatever you got behind your name. God says, if I bless you to get the education, can I get something out the blessing? Can, can, I, can I get in your boat? Can I still use your boat? He's, he's going to do that. Point two is this. He doesn't tell us what the blessing is going to be up front because he wants us to trust him by faith. He didn't tell Peter, Peter, if you let me use your boat, I'm going to give you a whole haul of fish. It's going to blow your mind. Why? It don't require faith. See, sometimes we want God to tell us up front what he's going to do. Yeah. How many of y'all realize that God ain't going to show you up front? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There are times in my life, I'm like, Lord, just show me. Lord, you just show me, God. Just, Lord, you start crying. You just, you God. <laughs> and God said, boy, just do what I told you to do. Right. I'm like, God, okay, I'm going to do it. Whatever you just give me an inkling. God said, nope. Do you know God may give you an inkling, but God never tells you everything he 
wants you to do. Because he knows we would quit if we knew the struggle we're going to go through again. Amen. You talk about, you want to get to this level. Okay, that's good. But you got to go through some stuff. Come on now. See, yeah. every person who goes high has been through some stuff to get where they at. Don't ever look at their story, uh, or the glory, I should say, unless you know their story. Well, yeah. You ever, you ever seen what somebody else got you wish you had it? Yeah. It's, for, it's fine to want to use somebody as a model. But God is not going to give you exactly what they got because you got a different story. But sometimes you want what they went through, or you want what they got, but you don't know what they went through to get it. If they told you all they went through, you'd be like, nah, I'm good. Some of y'all singles like, oh, I just want to be married. Just marriage, oh, marriage. And marriage is grand. When you make somebody like me, I mean, my wife, I mean, marriage is grand. When, when you got a good, no, I got a good spouse. Y'all know that. I just mess with her all the time. I even get to mess with her when I'm preaching, and she still comes home and loves me. Yeah. Some of y'all be like, hey, he said it one more time, I will cut him. <laughs> cut him. But you don't know what you don't know until you're in it. That's yeah. not true. And sometimes, you ever been halfway through something and you be thinking, like, is it worth staying in it? Yeah. Is it worth going through it? Sure. On the other side, you'll be glad you did. But when you were in it, you don't know. God said this, I want to use your boat. Will you trust me? Mm. When I don't explain anything to you, because God doesn't owe us an explanation. And all the time, he's not going to give you any inclination what he's doing. He just says, walk with me. Yes. Point three. When Jesus is in your boat, that's, I love this. Mm. When Jesus is in your boat, you are destined to prosper. Amen. When Jesus rode with you, you're going to prosper. Amen. Galatians 6, 9, don't be weary in well-doing. In due season, you're going to reap if you don't quit. If you don't quit. The hardest thing sometimes in life is just not quitting. Sometimes just pressing through can be difficult. Yeah. Sometimes quitting is easy. Some people are professional quitters. You know when they ain't oriented. You ever had a job, you've been in orientation, and you in your mind, you're like, I'm going to be quitting this stuff. I already know that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, anybody been there? I'm not the only one. I know I've been in orientation thinking like, dang, I'm sticking on the Excuse me, when is payday? <laughs> How long do I have to work to get this check? Because this ain't for me. I've already decided. You think I'm playing? My first job out of college, when they hired me, and, and it was a company that I wanted to work for, and they didn't pay well at all. They didn't. But we all knew the reputation the company had was, listen, if you do a year here, you're going to get promoted to this level here, and you're going to make six figures. Now I was like, bam. I'm 23 years old. I'm like, I can count six figures as more than five, nigga, so I'll take that. You know? And I was loving it. I was like, oh, I can see this light at the end of the tunnel. They weren't paying me much at all, but the light at the end of the tunnel, like, I'm going to get paid. And you know, you ever had those people, they all, the management called everybody together to tell you the great new plan they got? And they came together and told them, get this great new plan. We're, we're going to take away this commission thing. We're going to let you guys take your salary you're at. And then you can duck, you can get as much as 50% more with bonus. And I was thinking, I ain't making nothing. So 50% of nothing means me, I got one and a half nothings. <laughs> right then, listen, I was 30 days in the job. And I was thinking, I'm going to miss y'all, folks. <laughs> all my training partners, they was all excited. And I was thinking, man, I'm going to miss y'all. I got to start looking for another job. Because <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to be longevity. But sometimes we quit too soon. Sometimes you quit and you walk away and you destruct the wall one more time, you hit the orb with all the gold behind the wall. Right. And you walk away from it. See, Jesus will bless you, but I want to share something with you, and I want, and I want you to get this, because this is God presses on me. When Jesus blessed Peter in his hall, it said he had so much, he couldn't contain it all. He had so much himself. He had to call his partners to come help him to get all the fish. Now look, they, they fished all that long, two boats of guys, professional fishermen, Peter and Andrew, James and John, fished all night, caught nothing. James, I mean, James and John on the sea, Peter out there in the boat, all the fish start jumping in the, can you imagine, imagine, I mean, think about it. All the fish just multiply, just in the boat, the boat starts to sink. He got too much blessing. How many of y'all would be too blessed? I would be too blessed. So blessed, I got caught somebody else. Come on, help me get some of this blessing, y'all. Because God blessed me too much. I need the overflow blessing to flow into other people's lives. 
But check this out. God presses on me. James and John came right away to help. What they didn't do is they didn't get an attitude. Why did Jesus get in his boat? I had a boat right here too. Nobody ever choose me first. I ain't going to help Peter. Let Peter sink. Be careful. And I'm saying this. I don't know who this is to. But be careful. Listen. Don't get offended when God elevates somebody else. Amen. Your season will come. Say it again. Don't get offended when God positions somebody else in a position that you wanted or still desire. Because you don't know what they went through to get there, and you don't know what God can do in your life. And the enemy will creep in with offense. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in ministry. I, I believe me, I, there are people who was part of our ministry who when I talked to them, they were good to go until they got offended over something that they thought should, they should have had. And, and normally it wasn't them, it was somebody else in their ear. When somebody gets in your ear and tells you, that should have been you. You know when you deserved it. I've, I've had the conversation like, what, what happened? You was treating so well. Well, I thought that, uh, I was like, that one you even talking. It don't even sound like you. Somebody else spoke in your ear. Psalm 119, verse 165 says, Great peace have they which love your law, and nothing shall offend them. Be careful about one being easily offended, and even more so about taking somebody else to offense. Offended people always try to give you their offense. They will. I'm preaching better, y'all. Amen, but that's okay. It's a word for you. Whoever's more receive it. And, I, and I, whoever this poor, believe me, within the next week to 10 days, you go, it's going to come back to you because it's going to happen. You're going to say, Pastor, warn me. They are offended. They give me their offense. I'm telling you. Amen. Some of y'all watch. Somebody going to hit me up and say, Pastor, you told us don't be offended. Amen. What? It's going to happen. Trust me. That's Holy Ghost talk for you right there. Don't be offended. If you partner with the right people, that's the other point. Who you partner with? All right. When you partner with somebody, God bless and he'll bless you too. Even he'll do it right away. Don't move. That's a word. Tell your neighbor, don't move. Don't move. The enemy will always try to get you moved out of position. Don't move. God's going to use you. Don't get restless. Don't get jealous. Don't get offended. He'll bless you. Point number four. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm going to have to come back to this one uh, in a future message. I can tell you it'll take more time to develop this one here. But point four is this. Revelation 1, verse 6. The, uh, New King James says this. And he has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. He's made us kings and priests. He, what he said is this. He made us believers to be kings and priests. Let's look at the roles. The priest's job is to represent uh, the people, the God and God to the people. He is to, to instruct. His job is to build up the kings, to teach the kings how to live. To teach the king, whenever the king came, you read the Old Testament, whenever there was a king, there was always a, the priest around him who was a spiritual authority and spoke into his life. Even Nathan, Nathan spoke to David. You had to have somebody to speak into your life. Be careful of this, this culture that says, I don't need no preacher, just me and God. That ain't biblical. You need people to speak into your life. All of us need somebody to speak into our lives. But that's the priest's job. Now the king's job was this. The king's job was to go out to wage war and to conquer and bring in goods. And the, and the, the king would bring in goods to support the priest and the work of the ministry. Some of you all have a priestly anointing. God has gifted you to, 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 to teach and to, to expound on God's word and to speak to people's lives under authority of other leadership. Some of you have a king anointing on you. Some of y'all got some entrepreneurship in y'all. Some of y'all got some businesses you ain't even launched yet. Amen. You got some ways of making money. God is positioning you to bring in wealth and to bring in resources. And some of y'all, you're starting to see it. But I'm telling you right now, especially this season of COVID, man, so many businesses have launched. I'm, I'm talking to my manager. His wife just started making some bead bracelets and then started selling them online. And she didn't grow a business during COVID. She had to hire somebody. I'm about to learn how to make beef bracelets. <laughs> y'all be patient because the first one ain't going to be that good, but y'all buy it because y'all love me, okay? And then we're going to work out with you. <laughs> Amen. And that pastor got one beat on here and sold it to me. I love him so much, bro. I, I don't want to talk about him, but this is terrible. <laughs> 
But some of y'all got a king anointed on you, you just ain't released it yet. You ain't walked into it yet. But it goes hand in hand. And some people, very few, but some people have both anointed. They're good at having a priest anointing and a king anointing on them. And God says, I'm positioning you because there's things I want to do in the kingdom. But God says this, when I give you the anointing, I will teach you how to prosper as long as you're willing to finance the kingdom work. As long as you're willing to invest back in God's work, God said, I'll grow your finances. See, some of y'all right now, you're struggling. I told you last week or the week before, I said debt. Remember I told y'all debt? Yeah. Doing everything before tithing? Some of y'all need to start trusting God. Some of y'all say, but Pastor, I can't see how I can, I can tithe and make it. You know what? God designed for you to see. God designed for you to walk by faith. Yeah. Hey, faith. Matter of fact, I'll give you a simple way to do it. Some of y'all just need to grow to it. Just start every month. Start the first month, I'm gonna get 1%. Next month, 2%. Next month, 3%. By the 10th month, you'll be tithing. And I, and I guarantee, I've never heard anybody who tithes say, you know, I hate that I start tithing. Oh, no. I've never heard a time to say that. Come on. Ever. Right. Right. Ever. I'd give you money back guaranteed. Yeah. I've never one time in my life heard somebody say, the worst thing I ever did was start tithing. Right. I've heard people get testimony like, I didn't know I could do it, and God keeps blessing me and promoting me. Yeah. And how many of y'all been blessed in your friends because you trusted God? Yeah. He will do it. Amen. Yeah. The last point is this God does all these things. Why? Because God wants to get in your boat because he wants to bless your business. Because he wants you to do his business. God said, if you take care of my business, I'll take care of your business. Yeah. What's God's business? He in the business of souls. The reason why he got in Peter's boat, why? So he can preach out so he can preach to the people. And then when he preached to the people to bless the people, then Peter got the blessing. God says, if you let me in your boat because you want to help bring souls into the kingdom and expand the kingdom, God says, I can trust you with more. You prove yourself faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many things. Because why? You understand it's about kingdom expansion. God didn't give you money just for money. Matter of fact, the more money we get, we should ask ourselves, not, Lord, what's my standard of living, but Lord, what should my standard of giving be? See, with, with, with great wealth comes great responsibility. But when God says this, the liberal soul shall be made fat. God says, if you want to be fat, start giving. Y'all like, well, I'm fat in COVID. I'm talking about spiritual fat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking spiritual fatness. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God says, I'll bless. I'll bless what you do. So I'm close with this. It's this. The essence of kingdom economics is this. It's kingdom expansion. Touching men's hearts and lives. God says, I want to touch people's lives. And I want to use you to do it. And I'm going to bless you. Because you're going to take the resources that I blessed you with and you're going to further my kingdom. And as you further my kingdom, I'm going to bless you some more. And as you, I bless you some more, you're going to further my kingdom. As you further my kingdom, I can bless you more. As you bless me more, I can further the kingdom. See, it's a, it's a circle. See, God says that I can trust you a little. I can just keep expanding the circle. The circle gets bigger and bigger. You started right here and said, God can do it. God said, just keep trusting me and let me in your boat. Let me in your business and your occupation and your arts and athletics and your training. If you trust me, I'll take you beyond your wildest imagination. Give God praise in the house today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.